G'day all, I'm Graham Sanders and I live at Townsville, North Queensland. That's where Latitude 19 crosses the east coast of Australia. I'm trialling the honeypot hive system here in the tropics with the native species Tetragonilla hockingsi. This episode, one week after the induction. It's the 9th of June 2016. Temperature today, well, it's early morning, just about 20 degrees and activity started in the hive already. But we had a cold snap come through on day 5, where the minimum dropped down to only 9 degrees. But today we're expecting a minimum, or we had a minimum, of uh, 16 degrees and we're expecting 30 degrees today. So, let's look at what's happened in the week. As you can see, I've made some changes to the hive. The first change I had to make was within an hour after the induction, I saw, most unusually, this platform here was causing the bees a bit of havoc. A significant number of native bees won't fly vertically off out of the hive, they tend to sort of fall off the edge and then engage their flight gear. And so what you see is a lot of the bees were hitting this platform here and just causing them a little bit of grief and just looked messy at the end of the day. So I put a platform here to allow them to run out and then take off or fall to lower heights until they uh, get their landing, oh, sorry, their flight gear up and going and start flying away. So any recommendations down the line to anybody doing induction, try to minimise this area here. I've added a lump of wood up the top because this is quite light. This is just a safety concern in case any wind came in. The other change you saw was an entry tunnel and I'd put an entry tunnel there. And this relates to this hive as we see it here now. Now I haven't opened it for a week. That's very important with native bees. They like a dark chamber. And if there's light coming in, they just won't work the area properly. So what I had to do, or sorry, before I get into that, what you've got to do when you do these inductions is resist the temptation firstly to open this up every few hours to see what's going on or every few days. Minimum time, and this will be the first time I open this up in a week to see what's going on. And that led to the problem at the entrance here. It was rather open, as you see from the last video, and that caused a little bit of grief for the bees. I noticed a lot of resin being brought in by the bees, and if bees bring in a lot of resin, A, that's a healthy sign that they're gumming up the uh, new honeypot hive of any gaps, but it also means they need to get rid of some light that's coming in. And when you looked in the hole here, you could see the light. And I worked out that was a problem. But what was worse, after day one or day zero, what you want to call it, the first day, I shot a torch down here to have a look at what was going on inside the hive. And to my surprise, the bees weren't defending the new hive. They were back here defending the old hive. Not a good sign if you're trying to get an induction. You want the bees in here defending. So what did I do? Well, just like in the previous video where I shoved a hose in here and wedged it in, I shoved a hose in this side. That served a number of purposes. A, it created an entry tunnel, which I'll discuss in a minute, which is the other reason I did this. But more importantly, once I put wood around this, I cut out all the light coming in out the front. Now that cutting out the light saw the amount of resin bees coming into here drop away quite dramatically. Just dropped right away. But let's discuss why I put in an entry tunnel. Well, entry tunnels are very important for native bees because they serve a number of functions. The main function is defence, but they also serve to bring in oxygen, into the main brood chamber and in this main hive 
you'll find the entry tunnel about that long and it bypasses all the pollen stalls or any other gunk in here and allows air to come right into the centre of the hive to give fresh air to the brood. So all these entry tunnels come into where the brood is to allow air to come in. So it allows air to come in. That's very important for the hive. It's also a temperature regulator because the bees will form a density inside that tunnel either to let stop cold air coming in, in which case they put a lot of bees in there to block any cold air coming in, or they have few bees in the tunnel to allow cool air to get in there to ventilate the hive. So it, it does form a regulatory function, but its main function is a defence. And the bees defend their hive with the tunnel in four ways. It's their physical presence in there. They actually block off any intruder trying to get in. They'll also sit there and bite the intruder, their second form of defence. They've got strong jaws, and if, if push comes to shove, they will actually bite the intruder, as they'll bite anybody who opens up a hive during the daytime. Their third method of defence with the tunnel is they'll put little gobules of sticky resin under an attack the full length of the tunnel. So a nice long tunnel is necessary so they can sort of mine it, if you like. It's a minefield of little resin drops. All the way through the tunnel, they'll start lining it when under attack. And that's, that idea is quite simple. It's just stick up the attacking insects so that they can't get in. And the fourth way they do it is in Hocking's eyes bees, at least, they excrete a yellow compound that's extremely sticky onto the attacker. And by confining the attacker to the tunnel, they can stick him up with this yellow goo they spit out on the attacking foe. Now I've got a plane coming over, so I'll just uh, pause this a second. Now with the plane gone, we can continue on. So, why did I put an entry tunnel there? Well, I told you it's about that long, the entry tunnel. Well, if I didn't put the entry tube here, the entry tunnel was going to link up with the existing tunnel. And as I told you earlier, that night I looked up, the bees were defending here, so they, were treating, they weren't treating this as a separate hive. So, a small entry tunnel into here means that the length of the tunnel now finishes about here under normal circumstances, but they will curve it up into the brood chamber, hopefully, which means then it comes in and might finish about here, which is ideal. How do I know it was successful? Well, a couple of things happened along the way with when I put that tunnel in. The first thing is, I noticed that where the hose joined the hive, they'd actually resin that up. Healthy sign that they've accepted the tunnel as their own. The second sign was, by the afternoon, you saw what I call the ring of confidence. And the ring of confidence is when you get a number of bees hanging around the entrance of the hive and guarding it. That ring of confidence tells you they've accepted the tunnel. And the third uh, sign that the tunnel was accepted was that night after I put the tunnel in, there were bees sitting along that hose. They were actually guarding the tunnel, which means they accepted this chamber as now part of the hive. Now, one last thing, if you're doing these sorts of inductions where you open up a brood chamber, you may see on the first and second day the bees removing perfectly good grubs and pupae, or if you like, the young bees in their cocoons, out of the hive. That's perfectly normal because bees, are, well, I should say native bees, are very autistic in their way. They don't like change. In fact, they get rather aggro over the change and rather mean-spirited about it. What happens in a native beehive is it's a constantly moving front. They will fill up the mass brood chamber with brood, but as the brood hatches, they destroy that brood, any remaining brood, any dead brood or, or um, brood that hasn't formed properly, and immediately behind it is a layer called the advancing front you'll hear some brewers use. And that layer is where they lay their new eggs. 
and I'll just pause for this small plane to go over. I picked the right time to do this, didn't I? You can tell why I don't make a good filmmaker. I don't time the flights. Anyway, I hope that plane's passed over and you don't hear him too well. Anyway, that advancing front is the most important thing to the bees. And if anything is in the way of that advancing front, it's removed. They would rather destroy the young above that advancing front to make room for the new advancing front than to think logically and go round it. So when you go into here, you are going to disturb the brood and the layering of the brood, and it's not uncommon that you've shifted it and maybe pushed some brood closer to the advancing front. Bees will naturally react to that and just say, right, let's get that out of the way so we can lay more eggs. So don't be upset if you see a few what looks like perfectly healthy grubs and pupae being kicked out the front. Let's get into our inspection. I've told you before I haven't looked at this hive. What am I expecting? Well, if the gods have smiled upon me and I've been a good boy and blessed, I should see that the queen or a virgin queen has been moved into here straight away. I should see activity when I open up this hive and look inside. If the gods have really been kind to me, I should see the honey pot hasn't been destroyed and removed. I should just see that looking beautifully gummed up, sealed and being worked ready for expansion and ready for that virgin queen if she hasn't mated already to mate and comb being laid and eggs going in. That would be the most ideal situation. What do I expect? Well, with the cold weather this week, and uh, it was only a couple of days where we had low temperatures, only one day below 10, and, the, and a couple of days about uh, 13, but the days have been quite warm, but still not good for induction. You like it a bit warmer. But what I expect is the honey pot's been removed, the pollen pot's been removed, they're hanging around the brood chamber, but I want to see it all gummed up at least and sealed and bees in there, that they haven't joined a connecting tunnel to here and here and bypass this. I want to see bees working in here. If I see bees working in here, success. I'm happy with that. What's a disaster? I open this up. Nothing's been sealed. No bee activity. They've just decided to pipe straight through to the main hive and this is just the biggest entrance that they've ever had in their life and they're happy. So, without further ado, let's open this up and have a look and see what we can find. Ooh, now it's a bit stiff. Oh, there we go. Still stiff. I think they've stuck that down. Oh. No, just stiff. No glue there, so it's just a nice stiff fit, which is good. Quick look down, no sign of bees. So I can take the front off. Must be the paint that's causing a slight bit of stickiness. You can see where I've dumped the other tray, so we'll just pull them out. No, that looks fine. That looks fine. Oh, and look at this. I'm going to see if I can get you a picture of this. Forgive the jerkiness. I'm very happy with this. Look at that. Where are we? That's it. Activity, activity, activity. All up the top. It's gummed up beautifully. And... As predicted, the honey pot has been removed. But look at that activity at the top. That is success, success, success. Now I'll put this back. Let's hope I've guessed that angle right. Okay, I'm not going to open this up. You don't want to disturb this. Nobody's going to move into a home if the first thing you do is keep ripping open the home. But that looks great. There's bees around. They're just loving this. Now, a quick look with a torch. See if I can see down into this brew chamber. Well, I can tell you 
that there is pollen work down the bottom. There is a gaggle of bees in there. Can't see any brood, but I can see right to the bottom. And it's just looking great. Can't see through that uh, outer coating. Looking in the pollen pots, there seems to be work done already in the pollen pots. There seems to be resin, no, propolis. Let that plane go over. You can just watch me pretend I'm poking around and know what I'm doing. Okay, I was looking for signs of a tunnel coming up into the centre there. Can't see any signs of a tunnel coming up. Also can't see any signs of a tunnel going across there. What I can see from this is that there's every indication that the bees have taken to this, at least at the early stages, and they're loving it. So, we'll leave that like that now. I'll put these back on because there's plenty of room. I'm not expanding it yet because there's no sign of the hive taking. I'll put these all back. I'll even put these extra ones on as well. Get them out of the way, just as a storage area. So we'll put all these back. Just it's a nice, might as well just have them out of the way. They're yeah, just all the various parts to the hive. Okay, so very, very happy with what I see there. Can't complain at all. So we'll put it back together again. I'll get one of those is not fitting properly. Don't need them. Yes, I do need them. I'd rather get them out of the way. Which one's not fitting? No, just me. Okay then, so it all looks good. I'm very happy with that. Lid on. Beautiful. Quick check to make sure I haven't opened up anything, and I haven't. All right, so very happy with that. I might do a quick follow-up report next week, and it's no more than another sticky beak report, and we'll see what it's like. So thanks for watching.